powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Janelle Slade. And I'm Jay Cohn. President Trump set to touch down and speak to a crowd of thousands in Billings tomorrow evening. Tonight, what you need to know about his visit if you plan to attend his rally at Metro Park or avoid the crowds, lines, and congested traffic altogether. Today, we learned that President Trump will actually spend the night in Billings following the rally tomorrow at Metro Park. And of course, more time here in the Magic City for the president means a little more disruption for local drivers. Take a look at this map. North is on the right of your screen. You can see the Doubletree Hotel in the center of the screen where the president will spend the night. Now, starting at 2 p.m. tomorrow, Montana Avenue and First Avenue North between North 26th and North 28th will be closed to vehicles but open to foot traffic. Authorities will be checking vehicles at North 27th, just north of First Avenue North, and the Doubletree Hotel's parking garage is closed to the public. Open, though, to guests, but vehicles will be subject to search. Pack your patience is the message tonight from Billings Police Chief Rich St. John as the city prepares for as many as 10,000 people to attend the president's rally. The chief advises drivers to stay alert if you plan to be downtown. There will be uh, police roadblocks and officers at each turn to direct you where to go. And again, the message from police, expect delays. It's going to be a little bit of a delay uh, while the route is cleared and while, uh, while that motorcade is moving, but they, they get from point A to point B pretty quickly, and it's not that big of a delay. Uh, but we time and time again see people just say, well, I just need to go over there, I just need to go over there, so they're cutting through parking lots, they're dashing across the street. And St. John says more than 100 Billings police officers will be on duty for the presidential visit, and when it comes to paying for those officers, it's taxpayer dollars. Chief St. John says historically Billings has not seen expenses like this before. In fact, the city is still trying to be reimbursed for its cost from Vice President Mike Pence's visit to Billings this past July. Now we're told that Air Force One is set to touch down here in Billings at 5.30 tomorrow evening. The motorcade carrying the president will then travel down Highway 3. Each intersection will be closed for roughly 15 minutes. Plus, the bench connector from Lake Elmo to Main Street will be shut down for the duration of the event at Metro Park Thursday night. Q2's David Jay joins us now with more on the plan at the Billings Airport. David. Uh, Janelle uh, Jay, uh, for security reasons, only the regular users of the airport know when they need to be clear for Air Force One's landing. Procedures uh, will be the same as when Vice President Mike Pence landed at Billings Logan International Airport in May of 2017. An advanced team, the Secret Service, and the White House staff have been working with airport management for about a week. After the plane lands, there will be a no view of President Trump from outside the airport. The airspace around the airport will close prior to the Air, to, uh, air Force One landing, and no one, there can't be any movement at that time. So essentially, um, everything shuts down. Secret Service has requested that we block off a lot of the fence line that people would be able to view it from. They don't want any direct line of sight um, between uh, the, the public and the aircraft. The plan is for the president and his motorcade to leave the airport within 10 to 15 minutes of landing. Shane Kennerling says everything should be fine for passengers getting on commercial flights uh, with minimal delays. Jay, Janelle? All right, thanks, David. Well, if you can't attend the rally, but you'd like to watch it, Q2 has you covered. From the president's arrival to the rally tomorrow night, then his departure on Friday morning, we'll have full reports for you on air and online, including analysis from the field and in studio. So stay tuned to Q2, KTVQ.com, and our Q2 Facebook page for full details on road closures, the landing of Air Force One, and Thursday night's rally, all starting tomorrow. Chief Forecaster Bob McGuire joining us now. Bob. It's going to be hot tomorrow, back into the mid-80s, you were telling us, and there could be some long lines for people trying yeah. to wait to get into the metro. Well, especially if you're talking 10,000 people coming to the buildings, it's going to take a while to get 10,000 people through the door, even if they're running through. <laughs> so let me show you what we have for you. It's our standing in line forecast for President Trump's visit. And as you can see, on 2 p.m., it's going to be about 81 degrees and mostly sunny skies. By uh, 4 p.m., it's going to be 84 degrees. Same thing at 6 p.m. But now here's the good news. If you're outside, it's going to be a little on the wet side, too. We could see at 6 o'clock about a 20% chance for some rain showers moving in. Then at 7 p.m. it'll be 81 degrees with partly sunny skies and a slight chance for some rain showers then too. Jay, do you know? 
Thanks so much, Bob. Well, there's no question our airwaves are filled with political ads right now. Whether all the claims are true is the question. So MTN chief political reporter Mike Dennison has been fact checking those ads. Tonight, a closer look at the newest John Tester ad that accuses Matt Rosendale with money laundering, among other things. This ad is paid for and produced by the campaign of Democratic U.S. Senator John Tester. Here's how it opens. As Montana's insurance commissioner, Matt Rosendale's been busy running a money laundering scheme, dodging campaign finance laws and stuffing his own pocket. Well, not really. What Rosendale did is ask campaign donors to help pay off personal loans that he made to his unsuccessful 2014 campaign for the U.S. House. Several did so, and in the process, gave Rosendale's Senate campaign more than the $5,400 per person limit. That's allowed as long as the extra pays off the old debt. Rosendale used some of that money to pay off part of the debt, but then loaned the same amount back to his Senate campaign in May. Rosendale's campaign notes correctly that he hasn't violated any campaign finance law or rule and reported it all publicly. The campaign also denounced the tester ad, saying it falsely insinuates Rosendale did something wrong. The ad also makes these charges. Including raising over $16,000 from insurance executives on a junket to Florida. Then cut himself a check to his personal account when he got back to Montana. That junket was a conference of workers' compensation insurers, where Rosendale made a presentation in May of last year. He did raise the money from insurance executives and used it to pay off part of the personal loan he made to his 2014 campaign. Again, nothing illegal or against any rule, and it's all in public records. It's also worth noting that Tester's campaign has accepted plenty from insurance interests in the past 18 months, at least $193,000, according to the Center for Responsive Politics. Perhaps a more pertinent question is, when it comes to health care and health insurance, where do these two candidates stand, and how does that affect Montanans? That's a story we'll be doing later this month as part of our campaign coverage. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. All right, thanks so much, Mike. Now you can watch Mike Dennison's other stories breaking down this year's political ads on our website, ktvq.com. On the eve of his visit to Billings, President Trump now demanding the author of a critical op-ed piece in the New York Times be identified. The anonymous piece claims that top White House officials sometimes work against the president's agenda. The Times says the author is a senior White House official that op-ed goes on to say that many aides are working from within to sabotage the president's agenda, including a potential impeachment. The White House tonight expressing disappointment that the Times would publish an anonymous opinion piece. Judge Barrett Kavanaugh pressed today on issues from abortion to presidential power. Senators will soon vote on whether he gets a seat on the Supreme Court where he could shape U.S. law for a generation. Jan Crawford has the latest. <laughs> There were protesters. You work for us. We don't work for you. But the senators questioning Judge Brett Kavanaugh today were more focused on substance. Roe v. Wade, are you familiar with the case? Does the president have the ability to pardon somebody in exchange for a promise from that person they wouldn't testify against him? Throughout the day, Kavanaugh fielded questions on the major issues, from abortion rights to presidential pardons. But taking a page from the playbook of past nominees, he refused to speculate on how he would rule in future cases. You can't give me an answer on whether a president has to respond to a subpoena from a court of law? My understanding is that you're asking me to give my view on a potential hypothetical. President. Um Trump claims he has an absolute right to pardon himself, does he? Uh, the question of self-pardons is something I have never analyzed. It's a question that I have not written about. But he did praise the Supreme Court's ruling in U.S. versus Nixon, which required President Nixon to comply with a subpoena for tapes and other evidence during the Watergate scandal. That holding is one of the four greatest moments in Supreme Court history. It was one of the greatest moments because of the political pressures of the time. And he told Democrat Dianne Feinstein Roe versus Wade is an important precedent of the court. As best I can, I always try, and I do here, of the real world effects of that decision, as I tried to do, of all the decisions of 
my court and of the Supreme Court. A federal appeals court judge for the past 12 years, Kavanaugh also talked about some of the cases he's decided to show his independence, like those where he voted to strike down policies of his former boss, President George W. Bush, including in the war on terror. Why did I do that? It's because the law compelled it. We don't make decisions based on who people are or their policy preferences. We base decisions on the law. Now, several Democrats also complained that they needed more documents, more information to consider this nomination, but Republicans said that was just politics, that they have more documents on Kavanaugh than any nominee in history. This questioning will continue for a second day on Thursday. Jan Crawford, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Back here in Montana, the State Motor Vehicle Division is ready with a new website that will help inform the public about Montana's new Real ID compliant driver's licenses. Now the website will allow people to navigate through the information about the new Real ID. The most visible change you'll notice will be a gold star on the upper right hand corner of your license. The <coughs> website also will include information about cost and what documents you'll need with you to get a Real ID. Real ID will become available here in Montana next January, in January of 2019. Now, in the meantime, the state has applied for an extension that would allow those older IDs to remain in use through January of 2020. The state will find out soon if that extension has been accepted or denied a decision expected later this month. We are um, very excited about our new website because we believe it will be give our customers the very best information for them to be able to make a decision as to about whether or not Real ID is the correct choice for them and then, and then what the process is in order for them to get a Real ID. And this fall after the November elections are over, the Motor Vehicle Division plans to unveil a new campaign that will help keep people up to date on the status of Montana's Real ID. Coming up on tonight's 10 o'clock news, while Google was all finding itself, Facebook and Twitter were giving a status update on Capitol Hill regarding foreign meddling in social media. And coming up in sports tonight, Rocky Mountain College has to forfeit its season opening football win over Carroll. Scott Breen tells us why. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm Tracker weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Breen. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news 